You read that title right, folks. Hi, my name is Alicia and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's topic is going to be all about how YouTube is really hard. <laughs> Spoiler alert. As you read by the title, four and a half years. Right now I have about 865 subscribers and I just want to go over the reasons why it's been really difficult for me. And for those of y'all who resonate, please, please leave your comment down below. I really want to hear some of the struggles that y'all have been through just to see if it's some of the same similar things. Um, if there's something different that maybe, you know, I didn't talk about that others might be feeling. So I want to use this information to do more future videos to help you get motivated. And even if it's not motivated to do YouTube, maybe there's something else that you keep holding yourself back from obtaining, you know, a, another goal. So it doesn't necessarily have to be YouTube. So I hope that everyone takes a little something away from this video because all I want to do is help people, motivate people. I want you to know you are not stuck in your life with whatever you're going through. So hopefully this message becomes well received today. So let's get started. I've got my notes over here in case you see me glancing at my computer screen. So let me just tell you some of the personal problems that I have gone through of why I think it has been difficult for me to grow on YouTube. The first thing is I was definitely comparing myself to people. When I first started my YouTube channel, it was November, 2019. Before that, I was doing all of the things. I was doing the research. I was watching other people. I was taking notes. I was doing all the official businessy things that I'm normally used to. Um, I'm very business oriented. I've been in real estate for 17 years, over 17 years. I've lost count. It's been the majority of my career. So, you know, in the world of real estate, everything is about strategy and it's a numbers game. And well, guess what? <laughs> Spoiler alert. So is YouTube. <laughs> For the most part but even in real estate you know it wasn't always about the more houses you sell it was about well if you sold a higher quality house at a much higher cost you could sell less houses than this person and make more money so i wasn't good at real estate obviously i was a realtor three times in my whole career it is really hard to be 100 commission which is very similar to the world of youtube right like as of right now as of this channel being posted I have not made a dime from YouTube. I may have made money through YouTube because I do have two Etsy shops and I have a website where I design some digital products, nothing big, just some printables. So maybe one of y'all have already clicked just by hearing me talk about my tattoo bomb and whatnot, and maybe you bought, I wouldn't know. But yeah, I was comparing myself to others, and the biggest thing that I was really getting into was, should I get a camera, should I not get a camera? It was also, um, you know, do I need to have like this backdrop behind me? Oh, look at what they're doing. Oh, look at all the lighting. And I just, I, I, I just, I was comparing basically my background to their background. The other thing that I was getting into was, of course, with comparison, you get overwhelmed. And with overwhelm, I meant too much information. I would just binge watch video after video after video about growing a YouTube channel. Again, like I said, taking my notes, I got lost in YouTube strategy. Even though we're starting a YouTube channel to connect with others or grow a business or whatnot, ultimately, usually the end goal for everybody is to make money. It's to make some sort of money. Again, whether it's through YouTube monetization or whether you are trying to grow your business or show your product and you're trying to get people to buy that. The other thing, that got me, which kind of goes hand in hand with what I was just mentioning earlier, is the shiny object syndrome. And again, by that I meant I was obsessed with the ways to make money on YouTube. I was trying to be the person that was gonna perfectly figure out, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna be a life coach? Am I going to just tell people about my Etsy shops? Am I going to try to grow my own business and then just showcase that in the background? Am I just going to talk about Amazon products all damn day? <laughs> the other thing that definitely has made it difficult for me to grow my YouTube channel is that I kept starting and stopping. Now let's go over some of those things. The first thing, not gonna knock it, but I kept stopping every time I got a job. I have been struggling since really before the pandemic, but once the pandemic hit y'all, for sure, it has been a struggle. I have been laid off three times since the pandemic. Go watch some of my other videos about getting laid off. I've been laid off total five times in my life, but three times since the pandemic is scary. 
Okay, very, very scary. Um, worse is it was with millions of other Americans. Nobody knew what was gonna happen. I didn't know if I was gonna die from a disease or something. Like, it was scary. Obviously have the time before I got a job. And you know, I would try to crank them out as much as possible. Again, a lot of overthinking in between that, which is why you would have thought of all the months in the last four and a half years that I have been technically unemployed, you would have thought I would have had way more videos. No, because I got overwhelmed. I had shiny object syndrome. I also took time for granted. Oh God, that should actually be one of these biggest points. I thought to myself, oh, I only need to crank out one video per week, which is what all the experts say. I've got all week to do this. Really sucks about the whole process. It's the editing process. I love watching myself, right? I mean, who doesn't over and over and over again? And then <laughs> I can't even tell you how many times I've recorded a video and then I've scrapped the entire 30 minutes worth of content that I recorded because again, things were creeping into my brain like this is too long or I look horrible, you know, I don't have enough makeup on or the lighting sucks. And it was just really getting to me. So I kept starting and stopping even with re-recording a YouTube video. Once I'd get the job, I would get that job security. I've got money. I don't need YouTube. Then the pandemic happened and I look back and I'm like, man, I regret stopping YouTube. When I got the job, when the pandemic hit, I was not in a good mood. I was not thinking about hopping on YouTube and recording videos while my three-year-old child, I was trying to potty train, was just peeing all over the floor. Okay, I was not thinking about that during the pandemic. I was thinking of like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have money to pay rent. Am I gonna get evicted? All of the things, right? The other reason why it's hard for me to do YouTube is that I'm a mom. I'm a single mom and I no excuses. I know that when you are the parent of another human being, that is hard, mostly because he makes noise in the background. And I always wanted this like perfect, perfect, quiet environment until little by little, I started to find YouTubers where they would feature their children, not like their whole channel about their kids, which I personally don't advise, but they would feature their children or they would really try to do a video and you might hear, you know, a little bit of noise in the background. And I was just like, man, they're just, they're, they're, they're going, they're just, they're still doing it. So I had to just get over myself in that way. And now that my child is seven years old, I can close the bedroom door. He's in there playing video games on, on the iPad. And I could probably crank out, you know, 10, five or 10 minute videos really quick out in the kitchen or the living room. Being a single mom at the time with a younger child was really hard because again, I wanted that perfect quiet environment. Of course, other life duties that we normally have to take care of with as a human, our household. We've got to cook, we've got to clean. You know, I'm constantly decluttering. Still living in a 650 square foot apartment. I love this apartment though. I've just kind of been stuck here. I haven't been able to really move into something that's larger. Rent costs more now. I do live in Austin, Texas. So it's, it's getting expensive to live here. It really has. But this has been my home for 20 years. So the other thing that really uh, hindered me is Y'all, I'm a social butterfly, which is the perfect recipe to be on YouTube if you think about it. But when I have been a single mom, I don't have family here, I don't have my child's father here. When I go two weeks of being a full-time single mom, doing it all by myself, all I wanna do when the weekend hits, when he goes with his dad, is to go out. I wanna get out of the house, I wanna go to events, I wanna go meet, meet up with my friends. So I become this social butterfly whenever I don't have my child, therefore I wouldn't record a YouTube video. I may have already mentioned, but I'm just gonna point it out very clearly, is lack of confidence. The lack of confidence of like, how many times I've wanted to hop on camera and just start talking to you guys, but I have no makeup on. My hair looks like crap. Although I don't need to be glammed up, I look back on some of my videos where I actually did get glammed up and I was like, oh yeah, I like the way that I looked. That's a lot of work if you're trying to make YouTube as easy as possible for yourself. So the makeup and the hair, definitely an overwhelm. I always um, usually straighten my hair, but I am trying to, I'm trying to get my hair a little bit healthier. So it looks crazy. This is my natural hair. So I am 
am trying to do a little bit more of, you know, my own natural hair and not feel that um, I, sometimes I'd feel ugly because I mean, just look, it's, it's crazy straight in some areas. I'm trying to, again, I've reached a point in my life where I'm now 46. I'm trying to be low maintenance as much as possible, but like maintain a certain level of professionalism. With that being said, you are going to see some YouTube videos with my hair straight and with my hair curly. But you know what? At the end of the day, if you're here for me, then you're here for me, right? I mean, that's usually what uh, we pick YouTubers for. We resonate with their personality or something that they're doing, something that they're going through, the way that they look, you know, their age. Do not let makeup and hair overwhelm you. And here's what I'm going to do. I want you to subscribe because the next video that I'm going to go over is actually going to be um, the easiest tips to follow when starting a YouTube channel. And we are going to go into makeup and hair and I'm going to give you some tips that have helped me just kind of get over myself. So um, the last thing is lack of energy. This goes with lack of confidence, at least in my opinion, but lack of energy. How many times kind of like I had an internal energy, but then when I went to go record, I felt like I'm not, I'm not like, you know, like some of the other YouTubers. Again, that still comes back to what I was saying earlier, comparing yourself to others. I felt like I needed to have all this energy. And sometimes I really do have a lot of energy, right? Sometimes I'm in a funny mood. I'm in a sarcastic mood. Sometimes I might curse a little. I love Jesus, but I curse. So don't compare yourself. Your audience is going to know when you're just having one of those days and it's okay. Other than that, now I've come across YouTubers where I watched one video and I'm like, kind of boring. Like they're just, they're too chill, way too chill. And here's the thing. You've got to find that perfect balance of what is your natural personality and overacting. This is probably going to be one of the tips I'm going to go into in my next video. So I want you to subscribe, but I'm just going to give you a little tidbit slightly overact in your videos, slightly more than who you really are just a little bit just a little so that the person watching can get a little bit more energy out of you than who you really are. Don't let your lack of energy completely deter you from recording a YouTube video because with women having, you know, different energy levels at different times of the month, sometimes I am so chill. All I do is watch those slow living videos. Y'all, slow living videos, the ASMR spa videos. I was just watching them last night. The beginning of my day, I'm high energy. Once it reaches about, you know, six, seven o'clock, all I want to do is veg out. Our moods change and that's like, that's normal. Our energy levels will change throughout the day. They will change throughout the weeks and the month. Don't even worry about that. Just be who you are in that moment and crank out them videos. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you again soon. Why? Because I'm not gonna let a job stop me from recording YouTube anymore. I said it, I'm holding myself accountable. Have a good day.